I didn't draft these dudes. I would never draft these dudes, but some of y'all did, and you are going to regret it when you look like on this shit in a year. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE, Big Dogs Gotta Eat, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about eight players that you are going to have regretted drafting if you decide to go through with it this week, this weekend, whenever your drafts are. And on that note, the single best way to prepare for your drafts is through our draft guide. Available right now through bdge.co, but the easiest and the cheapest way to get it is by downloading the Prize Picks app. Prize Picks link in the description, and when you deposit ten dollars or more using promo code BDGE, BDGE, you're not only going to get a hundred percent deposit match on Prize Picks, but you're also going to get our draft guide absolutely for free, which has our draft rankings, our must draft players, our all fade list, all that good shit. Let's talk about the guys that are basically on that all fade list. Y'all might be asking, "Is my shirt stuck?" Of course, tuck, stay tuck. Justin Fields, you guys are going to sit here and be like, did you see how good he was in preseason week three against fucking backups? Yeah, I saw it. It meant nothing to me. I don't care about production in the preseason. He's a starting quarterback in the NFL going against third stringers. Justin Fields, objectively, the only thing he has going for him is his athletic ability. His offensive line is awful. He has the worst weapons group in the NFL. This man is going to get killed this year. I'm not predicting an injury, but he's going to take more hits than a fucking Muhammad Ali opponent. This is going to be a problem for Justin Fields. I, again, not predict the injury, but I'd be very surprised if he holds up throughout the course of the season. He's got no one to throw the ball to besides Darnell Mooney. And like, you could like Cole Komet, sure, but he's not like a game changer by any means. Darnell Mooney's super under, they don't have a real one. They barely have a real two here. It, Justin Fields is just objectively in the worst situation ever. Will he have his weeks where he rushes for 60 yards and a touchdown and that gives him like 26 fantasy points? Sure, but more often than not, he is going to struggle mightily. He is going to take a ton of hits. I wouldn't be surprised if those lead to a lot of interceptions, turnovers, forced fumbles, strip sacks. Things like that are going to occur frequently this year. Do we like Justin Fields as a player? To be honest, I don't really know, but I'm not drafting him in this year's current situation. You have guys like Trevor Lawrence is going behind him right now. I would rather take Matt Ryan, who's boring, but I think will end up being better for fantasy than Justin Fields is this year. Hot take, I guess, but I want no part of Justin Fields. And I think you're going to regret that wildly. The entire middle rounds of this like RB dead zone where these young explosive running backs are going off the board is a trap. It is a trap. All right. This is like when those scammers call your grandparents and tell them that you got locked up in Jamaica and they need your bank account and they give them that shit. You're your grandma in this situation. So Cam Akers, J.K. Dobbins, Brees Hall, three of the most exciting young running backs to fade in fantasy this year. Let's we'll start with Cam Akers. One, he's missed a shit ton of practice this summer. He's been dealing with a lower body soft tissue injury for weeks. Apparently he got back to practice yesterday. I have no idea if he's even close to full speed. Him back on the field does not mean he's ready for week one. They play in 10, 10 days and this is going to be a committee with Darrell Henderson. We also don't know if he's ever going to be back to pre Achilles tear Cam Akers. Achilles tear is not the same thing as an ACL tear. The ACL tear will get back to 100% post injury. It might take two years. The Achilles tear, there is no evidence to suggest that after you know, six months or six years, you get all of the strength back in your tendon there. There's no evidence to suggest that. So you saying that he has more time to recover from it, maybe it helps. There's nothing to actually scientifically suggest that. So I don't know if we ever see the cam makers that we were expecting pre-Achilles, which is unfortunate because he was an awesome fucking player at Florida State, playing behind that terrible offensive line. I know the numbers weren't there, but whatever. Size, speed, athleticism, had it all. I, he's not the same player anymore. I don't think he will be. And Darrell Henderson, again, one of the best picks in double-digit rounds of drafts right now. Make sure you scoop him. Make sure you fade Cam Akers where he's going. Brees Hall is in a clear committee with Michael Carter. He's a second-round rookie. Great player. Won't get the workload that you're looking for for at least like the first eight to ten weeks of the season without a Michael Carter injury. Fade Brees Hall in the fourth, fifth round where he's currently going. J.K. Dobbins, a lot of the same sentiment for Cam Akers, except for J.K. Dobbins is literally hurt right now. So I know he, he suffered an ACL tear. I don't think he's going to be ready for week one, which means he won't be 100% until like six weeks into the season. Just not a guy I want to use an early round pick on. He has been going in like the seventh, eighth round of drafts. I, y'all know my personal philosophy. I'm not drafting injured players going into the year. If you already have an injury, I'm good. My team is going to be hit with injuries in weeks two and six and 10 and 14. Why the fuck am I putting injured players on my roster willingly? That is a huge, huge mistake I see veteran and rookie fantasy players alike make. They look at these young explosive guys like a J.K. Dobbins and they say the upside is there. The explosiveness is there. Injury optimism 
is one of the biggest mistakes fantasy players make every single year. And J.K. Dobbins is a clear, clear fade for me for that very reason. Same with Michael Thomas, man. I see so many takes that like, Michael Thomas, bold prediction, going to be a top five fantasy wide receiver. Bam, we haven't seen him be good on a football field in like two years. He might not be the same exact play. He might not be the same Michael Thomas. He's got to go through. Is he injured right now? He had the hamstring injury. I don't know if he's 100%. Sure, he started looking good again, but he had a really serious ankle injury over the last you know year, two years that he's been dealing with. Finally had surgery on it. Does the scar tissue fuck up and make that him not as explosive or not as rounded on his cut or not as sharp on his cuts as he was in previous years? There are just so many red flags here. And now you look at the fact he's not playing with Drew Brees anymore. One of the most accurate quarterbacks of all time who clearly loved this dude. He has way more added target competition with Chris Olave on the field, with Jarvis Landry there now. Alvin Kamara is obviously still there. So he was kind of like in that Devontae Adams situation where it was like Michael Thomas and nobody else. So you were going to him every single time. Different quarterback, much older, a lot of injuries piling up. Like Michael Thomas in people think they're sharp taking Thomas like fifth, sixth round. It's like, oh, he's back. I get a fucking top five fantasy. What? No, nah, it ain't it. That ain't it. You're going to look back next year and be like, fuck. All the signs were there. I can't believe I just ignored everything that happened with Michael Thomas the last two years, and I took him, and he was amazing. Shit ain't happening, fam. Not happening. CEH, also not happening. Guy stinks. He's not a good runner. He's not a good runner. The Chiefs have told you what their plan is this preseason. They've played a lot of Patrick Mahomes. We've seen a lot of the starting lineup. We know how this is going to work. Clyde's going to get first and second down carries. Probably not all of them. He's going to get a lot of them that are in between the 20s. He's not getting the goal line work. He's not getting the pass catching work. I can't name a, le a less valuable group of touches a running back can get than what he's going to get. Jarek McKinnon has played every third down, every third and long. Two and four minute situations are not going to Clyde Edwards Hilaire. When they've gotten into the red zone, they used a ton of the rookie Isaiah Pacheco. They did not cut Ronald Jones either, which was really surprising, okay? They didn't cut Ronald Jones, which means even if he's only the fourth, he could be the fourth string running back getting like three to four carries a game. That's three to four fewer carries for the other running backs that we weren't expected to have gone elsewhere. This is going to be a giant committee, very much like the wide receiver room over there in Kansas City. Good fucking luck predicting who's going to produce in Kansas City on a week-to-week -week basis outside of Travis Kelsey. They'll all have their games. They will all have games where you're like, I knew I should have drafted him. And then when you put him into your lineup, the next two weeks, they're going to flop for you. This is a crazy, crazy situation to want to fade. Take the guys at the better value. That's what it is, all right? You want to take the McKinnon. I got McKinnon in the 16th round of the Bass draft. You can grab Marquez Valdez-Scantling four or five rounds after Juju Smith-Schuster. You can grab Sky Moore. Three like it, it, grab the guys at values because we have no idea how this shit is going to work out. And we've already seen how CEH hasn't worked out. All right, very very obvious here to me. Same thing with Kenneth Walker out in Seattle. I've been beating this drum for fucking years. It feels like at this point, dynasty fantasy football has aged me quicker than anything. Has aged me quicker than alcohol. Has qu fucking aged me quicker than 2 a.m. Don's runs. Like it is, it has gotten to me. And Kenneth Walker is one of the premier suspects at this point. Coming back from the hernia, sur hernia surgery for the very same reasons I'm not drafting J.K. Dobbins. Stop drafting players that are injured going into the season. All right, Stop drafting players that are injured going into the year. Injuries will find you. Don't find them. Kenneth Walker is no lock to play week one, two, three. I don't even know, but it's Rashad. And even if it was, it wasn't like, it was never like Kenneth Walker had the starting job. This is not like, a, this is not even close to a J.K. Dobbins situation where you knew Dobbins was the clear starter going into the year and then he got hurt. Kenneth Walker literally never had that role. When he was healthy all summer, it was Rashad Penny. It was every single fucking report was Rashad Penny's a workhorse. He's getting 20 carries a game. Third down work is going to Travis Homer. Like there was never a report of Kenneth Walker being the starter there. So the optimism on a dude like Walker is insane. Their their offensive line's terrible. Their offense is also terrible. Like even if he somehow wins the entire starting job, like it's a terrible situation to still. So don't draft Kenneth Walker, please, this year. You draft them next year. Draft all these guys next year. I'll be happy to have J.K. Dobbins on my team next year. I'll be happy to have Justin Fields on my team next year when they draft another wide receiver. I'll be happy to have Kenneth Walker on my team next year when Rashad Penny's done with his one-year deal and they figure out the quarterback. Like, I'll be happy to have all these guys next year. Let them fly by this year, though. And the last guy on this list is Chase Claypool. I know a lot of people aren't really going out of their way to, like, target him, and he's kind of a later-round guy, and there's still some hype about his athleticism from his big rookie sophomore year or whatever. George Pickens is taking his job sooner rather than later. George Pickens is the truth. Deontay Johnson been the truth. His offense doesn't have enough passing work and efficient passes and uncatchable targets going around here for multiple people to eat here, okay? So Pickens is a better wide receiver than Chase Claypool. That's going to play itself out 
very quickly. Very polished, which is the opposite of what Chase Claypool is. He's a big downfield threat who won pretty kind of soft, bro. He he drops a lot of those passes down the field. He's like Mike Williams, but a worse version of him. He's a role player in an offense that's not going to take a lot of shots downfield. And Deontay Johnson's an incredible separator. Pickens, again, one of the most polished rookie wide receivers right now. So Claypool's a guy that I want really no part of. And if you draft him again, you'll be regretting it for the second straight season. So that is my list of eight players that you will regret having drafted this year in fantasy football. Make sure you don't take them. We have a giant list of the all fade list in our draft guide right now, which again, the easiest way to get it is by going to prizepicks.com or downloading the prize picks app link in the description, deposit $10 or more using promo code B D G E. You're not only going to get that hundred percent deposit match on prize picks for you to play with on there, but the draft guide absolutely free. If you're in a state that's not eligible for prize picks, you can cop the draft guide with our rankings and our all fade list on bdge.co. I love y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Good luck in your drafts this week. And let's fucking go. I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more excited for the season, despite my monotone voice. I just, I'm fucking in the zone right now. Just believe me when I look at you with these eyes. <laughs> Let's get wild. Let's get wild.